it's inevitable, and they now must scramble to take action. The time has come for the 13 colonies to become a united military as well as political force. It issues currency against future tax collections from the colonies to raise and supply an army. Their mission now is to conduct a war, even while searching for a way to avoid it. We ought immediately to adopt the army as a continental army, take upon ourselves the pay, subsistence, clothing, armor and munitions of the troops. John Adams. Adams urges the immediate appointment of a commander to head up this new army. His Massachusetts colleague, John Hancock, a vain, ambitious man who has just been elected president of Congress, assumes he will be offered this even more important role. His friend Adams is about to nominate him, or so he thinks. And that is a gentleman among us and very well known to all of us. A gentleman whose skill and experience as an officer, whose independent fortune, great talents, and excellent universal character would command the approbation of all the colonies better than any other person in the Union. That is the gentleman from Virginia. Hancock is stunned. Adams passes him over for a gentleman planter from Virginia, George Washington. The Continental Congress wanted a national army, not just a Massachusetts army or a New England army. They thought that by getting a commander-in-chief from a, a different colony would balance that. So they cast a welcome eye on Washington from Virginia. At six feet two inches and 215 pounds, George Washington cuts an imposing figure. Prior to his nomination, he spoke very little in session, yet spoke volumes about his intentions by showing up every day dressed in a military uniform. Oh, here's a very impressive guy. I mean, he wears this military uniform with great dignity, and of course he shows up making the point, I have military experience. I am a person who you can count on as your military commander. So he has the image to do it, he's got the experience, he's from Virginia. They make him the commander in chief and he, he modestly says, I'm, I'm really not equal to the task and I'll just do my best. But lest some unlucky event should happen unfavorable to my reputation, I beg it may be remembered by every gentleman in the room that I this day declare with the utmost sincerity I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. George Washington. His behavior seems somewhat disingenuous. Clearly, he wanted it. He, he'd, he was very ambitious. He was particularly ambitious in military matters. Early on, he realizes that the best way to be ambitious is to convince everyone else that you're not ambitious. And he follows this through his entire life. Ambitious, disingenuous, modest. Who is this man, George Washington, the man appointed to construct a new continental army?